What's up everybody? Welcome to Playing Dead. I'm Greg Miller and this is the indoor kid Kumail. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How are you? Do I talk to you or them? You talk to me. Now they're dead to you. Not America. Not well, America. Well, we're worldwide. It could be anywhere. Okay. There's All someone right. in Australia watching I'll just you talk right to now. You. Oi, I'm in Australia. You're talking to you, Kumail. Spot on. I know, right? It makes me feel like you're putting on an American accent. And that's your real voice. Yeah. That's how good I that, that was. I can see that. You've got a good ear yeah. for voices. That's why you're doing a voice now in yes. The Walking Dead, episode three, In Harm's Way. That's you. Very exciting. You're here to reveal it. Uh, am I? Yeah, that's what you're doing here. A no one plus. told you anything. They just came here and sat you down. 100 you, out of 100. 100 out of 100. Yeah. That is the IGN scale, generally. So you're saying it's the Uncharted 3 of Walking Dead episodes. I'm saying it's the Uncharted 2 of Walking Dead episodes. Wow, I don't think you understand the IGN scale then. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's talk. You're Reggie. One-armed man in this. You've got to be a bad guy, right? you got a lot of things going against you here. you got one arm. Yeah, i got one you're arm. You're a minority. You're, you're starting trouble. Oh, yeah. You're starting oh, trouble in this game, I bet, one right? One arm is strike two. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty good guy in this. Okay, I'm a, tell I'm, me about Reggie. Uh, I get the sense that he's... Uh, Pretty optimistic, like his life before the apocalypse yeah, wasn't that great. Went bad. Yeah, so now he's like, he's found a little niche for himself. He's got a group of people. He's like, he's picked a new name. So he's like, oh, things are okay. He's picked a new name. Yeah, he picked a new name for himself. That's it was Rajiv, and now he's like, I'm Reggie. Oh, okay. Well, he's got to try to fit in, blend in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, one it? arm. Yeah. Looks well. sort of like this. Hard to, hard to blend in. Hello, who are you? This freaks you out. It's okay. It freaks me out too sometimes. Uh, tell me a little bit about his one armness. Where did this come from? Okay, Is there's zombies everywhere. Yeah. Oh, so we're just jumping to that. Guess he where his one armness com comes from. I'm gonna guess he he went the opposite direction of Lee Everett. Yeah, he just uh, got tetanus in his Oh, arm. got tetanus. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm glad no people. That's starting to spread around. It the was zombie gangrene. Populace. Yeah. Um, no, he got his one armness from you know. Zombie. Yeah, but it worked out for him this time. This is the big thing. Obviously, you know, you look back at Walking Dead characters, right? Like in the comic book where this is all based from, or whatever. You know, there's people who worked it out for. Dale, he got away okay. Yeah, yeah. We ever doing... did not do did, didn't work out. For no, him. no, no, no. But I, I feel like this guy's doing pretty well for himself. He's got, um, you know, his like fishing vest, so mm -hmm. he's got everything he needs right there. <laughs> it's just right there. You can jump right on it. He's doing great. He's on fire. Okay, so he's back at Carver's camp. That's right. That's not a good place to be from everything we know. They, people have been very frank. Carver's a bad guy here. He's sort of a bad guy. He is a bad guy. He's a very scary guy. Mm -hmm. And no, it's not a great place to be. But again, he's the guy. Reggie doesn't want to make waves, so he knows his place. Okay. Um, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I need to do. I'm going to put my head down and just sort of get through one day at a time, you know? And he, he's, I think he's having a good time. Is he getting laid? I don't know. Really, the one arm thing isn't turning the girls on? I don't know, but also, you know, the pool of guys is smaller too, so it's sure. not like... He's, he's funny. I, I listen to you record some of the lines of dialogue here. He's a funny guy. I think he's got like a fun sense of humor. He's like a fun, like he's having a good time, I think. He's he's having, having a, see, you keep saying he's having a good time. He's like trapped, he's working, he's got one arm, he's with the bad guy. He's got a good attitude, He's I got think. an upbeat attitude, though. Yeah. That kid's going places. Yeah, I think people who, after the apocalypse, people who were, you know, uh, grumps are still grumps, and people sure. who had like a sunny outlook are still like, hey, my arm's gone, but I've got another arm. I've got, it could I, be worse. It could be worse. Okay. How did you get involved with this project? You're I, like, I, I made a reference to the meeting, Indoor Kids, big deal. You're, you're a nerdy podcast. Everybody knows you're from there. I am very excited about being on this. Um, I got involved because we had um, uh, the writers uh, of the first season mm -hmm. on our show, Gary Witter, uh, so one you, of the writers. He was, you, you greased wheels. He That's was how awesome. You got in. Sort of, I kind of cheated. Okay. And then we sort of kept in touch with the guys at Telltale and they would um, send us, you know, uh, the new episodes right before they came out and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met Pierre, who's uh, one of the writers of um, this season. And they just emailed me and asked me if I wanted to be in it. And I literally freaked out. Yeah. And I said, yes whatever you guys need. So then I sort of put myself on tape for an audition and uh, yeah. So when it all worked out, I mean, it, w how quickly were you like, oh crap, I actually got it now? It was pretty quick. From when they emailed me to when I found out I had it was maybe a week or less than a week. But it were, you, were you worried about screwing this up is what I'm saying. Oh. Walking Dead, season yeah. one, great. Everybody loved it. Amazing. Now you're gonna come along, I, comic relief, one arm dude. Yeah. Or you're gonna screw I'm it all gonna up I'm gonna fuck it up, everyone's gonna hate me. Yeah, like, exactly. We don't wanna cry, we don't wanna laugh. 
Um, I hope I don't screw it up. It's, I mean, think, I think the games are so good and well written and the character design is so good that mm-hmm. even if I f*** it up, I can't f*** it up that much. Sure. Because everything else is so great. I'll, if I'm bad, I'll be the bad thing that makes everything else look even better in comparison. Mm. I know how it must look, but it's really not that bad here. Mm. So I think I'm fairly safe. You'll be the you'll be like the Carly Batteries moment of this season, is what you're saying. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Okay, yeah. I'll I'll be that. Okay, I'll That's... take that. Yeah, why not? I'm okay, you know what that is. Yeah, people will know what I you know. They'll be like, ah, oh, Kumail. Yeah, I'm just he out made... there, he's a one arm happy man. Yeah, he makes everyone else seem much better in comparison. So, what draws you to The Walking Dead? What I really liked about The Walking Dead game was that the um, you know video games are sort of about agency and I really felt like those games, the choices uh, really had uh, an actual impact on the story and the game and the narrative and the characters. I really liked the characters, I really loved Lee in the first season and um, I really, really sort of, you know, you play so many games it just becomes about the gameplay and you're sort of doing these gameplay loops over and over and with The Walking Dead I really felt engaged and really felt like a story and you know, a lot of people finished the game and then played it again doing different choices and I didn't because I was like well this is my story and this yeah. is how it's how it went for me and I really connected to it and I uh, the narrative had a really satisfying arc for me so I that's what I really loved about The Walking Dead is that I really got emotionally involved with the game. So as someone who played through season one these were my decisions that the end of it how tough is it to step into the VO booth then and read all these different things and they're telling you, all right, now, now Clementine's not talking. Okay, now she's being mean to you. Okay, now and you have to go and have the same conversation with yeah, her. Yeah, I actually, it was actually really fun because I am so familiar with the game and with that gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got exactly what they wanted. I don't know if I nailed it, but I knew what they were going for. Yeah. So if someone hasn't played the game, it might be weird. Like, why do I have these different reactions to, to you know, the same thing? But... Um, Having played the game, it really sort of helped me contextualize what all the uh, lines were. It was actually really, really fun. And I was sort of s- seeing it in my head while it was happening. because The button prompts were popping up in front of you. Yeah, yeah and yeah. the art style of the game is so strong and yeah. specific that it was sort of easy to, you know, I mean, I know what my character looks like, so I could see myself saying his lines. Just with, being all one-armed and with grinning just one and arm. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's also losing his hair. So that's part of it too. I mean, this guy's got. He's, he's got problems. He's, You're, what are you even bringing up the ladies then? You guys don't have a limited pool. Everything's working against Reggie. I'm saying when most of the guys are zombies, the one-armed man is king. Sure, that's yeah. true. I guess there's there's a lot of things for Reggie to pick up there. Yeah, he's doing okay, I think. All right, well, you pop, you pop up here now in episode three. Yes. We're all excited to see how it pans out for you. Oh. Do you die in episode three too? Um, no, it's vague. No, oh, it's vague. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't die. That we know of. That we know of, I don't know. I mean, it'll be, mainly it'll be based on your performance. You know what? That is terrifying, but it is true. Yeah. If I, if I die, I know I did a shitty job. And if I live, maybe I didn't. Okay, so if you die, at some point, we yeah. know it was because you were bad at this, but you're good at other stuff. Where can other people find you? Um, you're doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. You're, trying to be one of these, you're trying to be one of these King of the Nerds people. I don't I'm like trying it. to be one of these. Take me with you. Can uh, I be uh, yeah. the liege to the Nerd King? Well, you gotta have. You gotta come do the podcast. I do this podcast called The Indoor Kids mm-hmm. with my wife Emily V. Gordon. We do it on the Nerdist Network, and it's about video games. Okay, I know primarily. About them. And then you can watch me on the new HBO show called Silicon Valley, which premieres April 6th. So I don't know if it's already on now. Me but neither. It's Sunday Maybe. nights at 10 p.m. right after Game of Thrones. Oh, well, that's a good slot there. So watch Game of Thrones and watch Silicon Valley, created by Mike Judge, who's a genius. Uh, I think it's a really good show. Is there as much sex and nudity in Silicon as there is in game? There is nudity, but not the kind of nudity you want to see. Well, let's not. Let's and not that get is, ahead of ourselves. That is true. All right. Well, Kumail, it's been a pleasure. Give me a handshake. Thank you for having good me. Good luck. I hope you don't die. I hope I don't die either. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, for everything about Telltale's The Walking Dead, keep it here on IGN's Playing Dead. But you give me the cold shoulder. She can be tough to read. No kidding.